Hi, and welcome to this third interview that we're doing, um, exploring some of the issues around marriage and trying to think together about how we can take care of this precious gift that God has given us of marriage. We were thinking um, in the first session about the idea of being a team, standing together in partnership. And then we were thinking um, about the idea of sacrifice and of serving one another. And in Philippians chapter three and four, you discover that joy becomes this major theme of what Paul writes about. So for example, he says, rejoice in the Lord. And then in chapter four, he says, um, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And so we're gonna just explore um, for a few minutes the, the idea of joy and where our joy comes from and how we can pursue marriages that are built on joy that comes from grace. Um, Paul's experience of joy is all tied up with Jesus. So he, before he met Jesus, he was very religious. He was a legalist. He prided himself on all the rules that he kept and all the ways that he upheld the law. But then he met Jesus, and this is how he describes it. Whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And then he talks about not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. And so Paul says, my joy is because I know that it's not about my performance. It's not about the rules that I keep. It's about what Christ has done. He has given me righteousness. And I guess for most of us, that would be our experience as Christians. We say that, yeah, I understand that. I understand that I'm saved by grace, not by works. And we find our joy in that. But our problem is that we still have a default towards legalism. We can still easily think in terms of rewards and rules and what we must do. And that can creep into our marriages. And so though in our relationship with God, we might try and live on the basis of grace. Sometimes in our marriages, legalism can creep in. There are rules that we have to keep, or we keep a record of the good things that we've done, or, and we take pride in how hard we've worked, or, or we demand things of others. And we can feel to ourselves, I must do this and I must do this. That is legalism creeping in and it can rob us of joy. And rather than living in that rule-based world, instead, the gospel calls us to live in the world of grace, to breathe in the oxygen of grace and to know the, the freedom that that brings. So that our marriages don't become full of, I must do this and I must do that. And instead become full of, because of Jesus, I can do this. And we can live like this. And so we want to explore that idea of grace, that idea of joy and freedom in this session. And it's all rooted in what Christ has done for us. Not by works, not because of what we've done, but because of what he has done. And when we begin to think like that and apply that to our marriages, it begins to help us to see one another, not with the legalistic eyes that spot mistakes and are critical and overbearing, but instead that we see each other through the eyes of grace, that see one another as righteous, that see one another as loved and accepted by Christ, and that we treat each other like that. And it leads to a life of joy. Paul talks about contentment. He talks about peace. He talks about these qualities that flow from grace. And what a difference it would make if our marriages were full of that fresh oxygen of grace rather than the crushing burden of legalism. So why don't I lead us in prayer and then we'll introduce you to um, who we're going to interview in this session. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you that you do not treat us as we deserve. Thank you that we are not rewarded on the basis of our works, but instead a given righteousness because of Christ. And we ask that we would build marriages that are full of grace, that are full of freedom and joy. We ask that you keep us from critical and rule-based marriages, 
and instead that we would pursue the freedom and joy that come from knowing your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I'm very excited to introduce you to um, my parents, my mum and dad. Um, I'm going to, we're going to talk to them for a little while about their marriage and about how they have sought to pursue joy and grace in their marriage. Um, they're just coming up to 50 years marriage, so they have um, plenty of experience to draw on. Um, so Linda and I are going to chat to them now. I'll pull this camera around like that. And this is Paul and Di, um, my mum and dad, and we're going to chat to them um, a little now. Um, on this subject then of, uh, of joy and grace, what's been your, some of your experience? Have you, as, as a couple, have you tried to pursue that? Um, have you tried to find your joy in Jesus together? I think um, it's great to be able just to share a little uh, because we have made lots of mistakes, but I think we have, in God's grace, learned some lessons over these 49 and a half years. Um, and I think absolutely fundamental is that it is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that we're growing in. And therefore, if we're to grow in that grace, we need to grow in him and in our relationship with him. And in our marriages, we need both to support one another to grow individually in our relationship with Jesus, but also um, to grow together in our relationship with Jesus. So we have tried to make it a priority to spend time together reading God's word and sharing it together, listening to it, trying to apply it together, and also praying together. Um, and I think. We've often failed and we've often gone wrong, but we just come back and say, Lord, we've messed up, but let's just start again, can we please? And we go again and um, I think prayer is just a wonderful leveler. Before the cross of Jesus, as husband and wife, you come together and you don't have to find all your resources in one another because you find them in him. So I think that's that's yeah. been a huge lesson that we continue to seek to learn. When, when, when we were first married, we were quite young Christians. We'd only been Christians for a, a couple of years. And I think Paul was more um, desiring of really wanting to grow more like the Lord Jesus than I really understood. Um, and, um, but we were committed to having sort of quiet times and but I must be honest, sometimes I thought, oh, this really is a bit of a drudge. Is this going to be like this for the rest of our lives? And I was really challenged. I'm so thankful to God by um, 2 Corinthians 3 verse um, 18, which says, we all with unveiled face contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. And I think... Um, the Holy Spirit, or God, really showed me that if I am going to reflect something of the Lord Jesus to other people, then I need to be spending that time with him each morning, each day. Um, and that was such a challenge to me and just turned having a daily time with the Lord on its head for me and made me really want to do that. So, yeah, I just share that. as. Yeah. Did you find that... Um it's always been plain sailing or does it vary according to the different seasons of life? Oh, perfectly plain sailing. We've never <laughs> had a moment. <laughs> so that's 50 no. times 365 quiet times, yeah? <laughs> no, no. no it, it's, the thing about us as human beings is that we aren't, we don't, we're not constant. We're not like God, are we? We don't remain faithful and steadfast we go up and down we have good and bad days and God understands that and knows that about us it's it's learning to to help one another through those different experiences so one of my very early lessons um, as a husband is that I did not have to initiate everything spiritual in our marriage um, so when I discovered that actually Di was much more sensitive in terms of prayer 
and wanting to pray than I was, I didn't have to think, goodness, I must say first, oh, shall we pray together? It's actually a partnership. We're not competing. We're in this together, to learn together, to grow together. Uh, and that's and that's very releasing, really. Um, Funny, because that's, that's been very much our experience as well, that um, I think in the early days of our marriage, when Linda would suggest that we pray together, I found that quite threatening. I, well, not, not threatening, but frustrating. And it sort of made me think, oh, I should have suggested that. And then I was quite quite grudging about praying then because I thought mm, I, I felt irritated that she was more godly than I was yes. um, competition of course <laughs> yeah yes and I think those are things that sometimes people don't tell you um and different couples work differently but certainly that was our experience it was when one of you suggests mm. praying together actually to to Re embrace to that to that. rejoice in that yeah. yes yeah. I, think I think one of the other things which is just an issue is this whole thing of not being legalistic. Yeah. Uh, that's really important. But if we're not careful, we can say, well, I don't want to be legalistic. So I don't want to set a time every day. I don't want to have a routine. I want it all to be just spontaneous and natural. And what happens if you go down that route is that, well, for us at any rate, it just doesn't happen at all. So we need to have some, structures in place that can help us they are not there because we have to they're there because we want to and i think that's it's just the illegalism thing which is important is also it's just important to set that balance really yeah. i think too when when you have young children um it's it's a different season and um there are challenges there but we we did clearly maintain that we we want spent time with the lord each morning and i i think you have to ask john too but i think mm -hmm. the boys grew up knowing that that time was important to us and in the days when through certainly through the teenage years when perhaps they were not so keen on spiritual things and things like that we felt we just prayed that by our example that would speak to um our boys and people who lived in our home with us as well that that is a, a priority always for us yeah mm, okay. um let's let's talk about um thankfulness i know one of the things that you um have tried to work on and to think through is grace will lead us to thankfulness a, a, a relationship based on what jesus has done for us will mean that we can be thankful. Mm -hmm. What's your thinking about that? Have you, what's that look like in your marriage? I think, uh, I think quite a lot depends on your personality really. So Di is a very optimistic and positive person, sometimes slightly irritatingly so, but um, one of the great things is that she is very often thankful for things and expresses that. I'm so thankful for this. I love this home, I love this about this and that. I, she says to me, I love this about you. So it, it helps to produce that culture of thankfulness. If you've got an optimist between you, that is, that is very helpful. Good stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> but, but encouraging one another, and when things are difficult, or by choosing something to be thankful for, or something to actually go and do together that you can enjoy, uh, I think those are, are helpful things. Yeah, uh, and I, I, it is all by grace. I, you know, we look back now with great thankfulness to the 50 years of marriage we've had. And um, it is all by grace and how God has taught us lessons and taken us through experiences, experiences that were very hard at the time, but um, that made us learn new things about um the lord jesus and trusting him and just that faithfulness of god that cannot help but make you feel thankful so and as we look ahead you know i i think god will continue and god will continue to be faithful there will be hard days ahead when perhaps one of us is well we will be one of us will be widowed and and yet that will be I pray that that will be a 
time of, of learning new lessons, depending on the Lord Jesus and a new adventure, however hard that is, because he is always faithful and we have a glorious hope too. It's, like, it's interesting, so Paul in Philippians 4 says, I know what it is to be in need, I know what it is to have plenty, I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think when our joy... What's lovely about that, sorry to interrupt no, a preacher, but uh, <laughs> what's lovely about that is Paul says, I have learned that. Yeah. So we can learn thankfulness and we can learn through thankfulness to be content. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is... There is effort on our part, but God great meets us with his grace to give that sense of contentment, and contentment leads to joy. I mean, one very precious um, verse was uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, um, where uh, Jesus, or God says, uh, my grace is sufficient for you, my power is made perfect in weakness, and that um we when when our, our second son died um at three months old that that verse we we mm. we thought of that verse i mean god brought it to our minds and and that is just a very precious verse and that is an example of of a really hard time and yet it was it is a pivotal pivotal <laughs> moment in our in our in our lives of seeing the faithfulness of God and that we can now thank God for that experience mm. yeah I remember when um one of the early times that I met you and I saw that plaque on your mantelpiece my grace is sufficient for yeah. you you told me the story um of how yeah. important that verse was and I think it's a great testimony that when you speak of daily reading God's word that is what then feeds into that word keeping you going and giving you everything you need when things are hard and perhaps yeah. you're not having such a regular time of quiet time and yet you're clinging to the word in a way that perhaps you never had. And so I think a, it was a great testimony to me and an encouragement to me yeah. to keep God's word central to our lives and our marriage. Mm, thank you. Let's, yes. Yeah. Let's just move on from um, thankfulness. Um, I just want to talk about, um, I think sometimes in a marriage, we can lose our joy in, in one another. We can begin to become irritated with one another. Um, I think during a time of lockdown, um, many marriages will be experiencing that sort of friction and tension. Um, and we can become quite graceless in the way we treat mm. one another and quite mm -hmm. critical and uh, pointing the finger and, and seeing everything that the other person's doing wrong. Mm -hmm. How have you kind of worked on that? How's the grace of Jesus been at work in you in that? Well, it's still a process. We haven't, we haven't endured lockdown without some moments of irritation and frustration with one another. Um, but I think, I think appreciating the things we do do and the thankfulness thing is very important in that. I think it's all part of trying to um, cherish one another. We use that word in our marriage vows. We say that we're going to cherish the other person. And there's a, a lot in that word about, you know, really wanting the best for the other person, wanting to see the other person flourish uh, and develop their potential and enjoy their gifts and all those sorts of things. So trying to find opportunities for that. So in this lockdown time, trying to, to do nice things, good things for one another is, is really helpful. Mm. Not getting sloppy about, you know, what you have to eat, you know, making it a bit special. Um, I think too, the importance of really listening to one another, giving one another time to share, um, not getting irritated because somebody's a bit grumpy, but just saying, you know what's going on why are you feeling like that and just um listening trying to understand the other person and particularly if there's been a disagreement just um 
seeking to listen to understand why it's the, why that person that why your husband has reacted like he did and things like that and then forgiving what forgiving one another which is very important and i think too um marriage is is such an adventure and i think we must never lose that sense of adventure that this is god's adventure for us and it's much it's actually much bigger than just our comfort i mean um it being nice for one another but that god has chosen marriage as a as a foundational foundation of society and to to really point to christ with his bride the church and um i love that that those verse that verse um that, that you re talked about but i press on to take hold of that for which christ jesus took hold of me and i sometimes pray that at the beginning of the day what have you taken hold of me for today lord help me or help us to take hold of that and that that keeps life quite exciting really to see what god is going to do <laughs> even as we get old <laughs> i think the the forgiveness thing is really important and uh, we learned we were we were taught early in our marriage that just simply saying sorry to each other is is not enough we need to actually to use the words would you forgive me and yes i forgive you and we need to pray that together before god so that we you know we have gone through that i mean there may still be that lingering sense of pain and hurt that needs to keep on being resolved that's the process but that initial asking for and offering forgiveness needs to be verbalized um, yeah. yeah yeah it's it's very interesting i mean one of my reflections thinking back to being a child and watching your marriage i, I never i never remember you moaning about each other um i never remember you being bitter towards one another yes there were plenty of times when you don't need to go into detail <laughs> when things weren't weren't smooth like the time in france when mum lost it but there was lots of times when <laughs> things weren't smooth but you, you didn't hold grudges and you didn't moan about one another um mm. which I, I looking back i'm very thankful for and i and i think that does come from that deep sense of no but in christ i'm mm. forgiven he's forgiven me and therefore we must extend that forgiveness to one another yes. um and it comes to i think the fact that marriage is a covenant mm. i think I think there are times in our marriage when you you think lord you this was your plan and purpose for for us to be married um help us through this i i, I mean that didn't happen too often but i mean there are happy ones twice and you know that that is again a mm. great strength that before god we made those vows um and so god is committed he's he's committed to our our marriages more even than we well we, yeah he is yes yeah, yeah. Mm. there's so much to learn isn't there really so the bible talks so much about being gentle with one another bearing with one another you know understanding that we're all faulty sinful flawed human mm. beings um and it we, if we go into marriage expecting the other person to per be perfect or you think you're going to make them perfect then you know you're in for some very unpleasant surprises really yeah. but but just being gentle in these days just being a little less quick to make a comment or a bit more careful about the timing of a comment mm. um, you know it's so easy i think to say the comments at the wrong time mm. and you know <laughs> die will sometimes say to me why don't you tell me now you know i've got my hands full of shopping or i'm just about to say why tell me now um, and there is a time and there is a tone to use and there are words to choose that can help to convey a concern without it becoming a hurtful criticism yeah Yes, I suppose it's whether it's with the intention of building up the other person or whether mm. actually 
really all you're doing is venting your frustration about a situation, which I think we've yeah. experienced probably more so in lockdown than we ever have any other time. Mm. Yeah, just recognizing mm. our tendency to do that and choosing. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, mm. I'm going to suggest we um, finish there. I think there's, there's loads of things to take away. I, I think um, just to recap some of those things, we talked about pursuing delight in Jesus and in grace together, you know, reading the Bible, praying together, making time to do that, doing it on our own, doing it together. Um, we've talked about thankfulness, cultivating a, a, a thankfulness in all that God has done for us and given us in Jesus and in one another. And we talked about this idea of cherishing one another, of looking at one another through the eyes of grace rather than with critical mm -hmm. eyes and seeing marriage as this adventure where we forgive one another and we go again and we pursue and take mm -hmm. hold of all that God has taken hold of us for. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much um, for taking the time to talk. Um, Dad, why don't you pray for us as we finish? Father God, we thank you so much for your gift to us of marriage and for giving us the privilege of being married to the person that you've chosen for us. And I want to pray for each of the couples who is engaging with this material, that they would be increasingly looking to you to fill their marriages with grace that would result in an overflow of joy and thankfulness within their marriages and their homes and their families. Father God, please be at work by your Holy Spirit. And uh, may the result of this time of lockdown not be marriages that are rocked and shaken and battered, but marriages which have grown and been strengthened and flourished because you have been at work. We thank you for your amazing purposes to use our marriages to glorify you. Please do it, Lord, we pray, in the great name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm going to hand over to you guys now to look at those questions that come with this session and to think about some of these issues for yourselves and what a joy it would be if we could live marriages and build marriages that are full of grace, full of joy, full of cherishing one another, but there is a battle in this. So discuss it together, pray together. And if you want to talk more about this, if there's things you'd like to discuss more, then please do get in touch and we can share more with you. But thank you for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching.